Greetings, welcome back to Random Tronic. I'm Chris and today I've got a box, a slightly squished box that contains some parts that require being put together. And this box came from Banggood. It's an original Highland DIY graphics version LCR ESR PWM transistor tester kit. A bit of a mouthful as usual. I'm sure that's some SEO happening in the title in the description of the product commonly called as a component tester very very useful thing and this variant here normally they come pre-assembled and ready to use this one is more exciting because it comes as a bag of parts so let's open it up and see what we get inside we've got a letter it says product description transistor tester and the bag of components We've got another bug inside the bag. So we've got the screen, printed circuit board, double-sided, zero insertion force socket. This is where we can connect our components under test. Socket and an Atmega328, basically the same thing as Arduino, the same microcontroller used in Arduino. And this one has been pre-programmed with the right software to run this tester. 9 volt battery clip, female header, male header, rotary encoder, some resistors, more resistors, more resistors and more resistors, oh dear, and more resistors, and more resistors, and more and more, four screws, little LED, Two spacers, little nut, I think that's for the encoder. One, two, three, four, five trannies. Got two 9014s, one 9012, TL431, and 7550. So we've got three different type of trannies. Eight megahertz crystal, and some caps. 102 that would be 1000 pico so 1 nanofarad 104 that's 100 nano 103 10 nano one more 100 okay it looks to be 5 100 and caps and 110 22 picofarads two electrolytic caps 10 microfarad each 400 volt cap, that's a little bit odd, but okay. 220 nanofarads. Maybe this ended up in here by mistake. So let's start stuffing the board with resistors first, and that brings me to perfect opportunity to show you this. This is an old archaic, but uber cool device to bend resistor legs. And this is great. So. What you're meant to do is put the resistor in here and pull the trigger and that will bend the legs. Before this is used, because the resistors can have different distance between the holes in the PCB, you can adjust that by turning this knob and whatever the distance between the holes, picking two random holes to show you, as long as they fit into the holes, this is set to the right width. So in this case, we're going to wind this down like so and this should be just about right for our pitch of the resistors so we can start bending the legs which is done like this precisely the width required for the holes in the PCB how cool is that once again Resistor in. When it comes out, the legs are nicely formed. And the last resistor, since we used up all of them, that's kind of self-error checking because we stuffed everything. We know everything is stuffed in the right place. And let's get up close, just because we can. Because this is a double-sided board, it's always a good idea to hold it just a tad longer with the iron, each hole that is, so the solder flows nicely onto the other side, all the way through the plated through hole. And let's cut the 
legs off. Next thing, let's put the socket in. So the crystal in next. And all the trannies right now did match up with the part number. Now the zip socket and this looks rather nice. The contacts seem to be gold plated. The encoder, which was a little bit fiddly to put in because of the mechanical tabs that have just been a little bit too wide but that's okay eventually it gave in now what's left is to connect the display with the rest of the board there are the mechanical retainers or standoffs that are meant to go in here like so and we can even tighten the screws up a little bit to hold everything in place and that should be easy to solder now on both sides excellent now the at mega 3 to 8 normally the legs are far too wide for the chip to be inserted into the socket so the, those have to be bent in a little bit and mind the pin 1 orientation as you can see I've improvised some legs out of cable clips and that works quite well keeps the board raised a little bit off of the surface battery and let's see what happens so nothing but if we press a button press and hold no uh oh okay that was a little bit anticlimactic but i have discovered the problem if you look closely and rewind the video a little bit you will notice that this transistor marked 7550 previously was in opposite orientation oops i have soldered in backwards paying more attention to the camera and that resulted in me soldering this upside down press the button and ta-da it works presumably let's test some parts check this out so when i press the button it goes through the power up and it's testing says no damaged part because there's nothing connected to it but then it says not calibrated for calibration clamp the three pins together and start with the key acknowledge the self test with the key within two seconds disconnect pins after the message isolate probe is shown and connect a good capacitor with at least 100 nanofarad to pin one and three only after the message one capacitor three greater than 100 nanofarad is shown and that's what i think this cap is for what i've been used on my previous tester and this was pin one then two then three then one then two then three and so on on this one is slightly different so pin two is the middle one and three to the left are pin one and three to the right are pin three there we go selection and we want to do self-test it says short probes test end transistor yes let's try again and there we go 2.18 so yeah 220 nanofarad esr 0.14 ohm that works so it seems the self-test procedure has been successful i've got a bag of parts and you might ask what's the big deal why would you need such a contraption like this well when you salvage a lot of parts you'll be able to test them this is a diode 1.93 forward voltage also tells you reverse current and capacitance 6 picofarads it won't tell you whether it's an led because you can see that i guess but it behaves just like a diode here is a capacitor an electrolytic capacitor almost 5 microfarads but esr 3.5 ohms this is a cheap alternative to an esr meter if you start it up by pressing and holding the rotary encoder you will get into a menu and there is a dedicated esr capacitance plus esr mode but you have to use pins one and three let's connect it here onto the pads there we go 4.9 microfarads 2.9 ohm esr this mode is meant to be a little bit more 
accurate. Here we have a transistor 3904. So a jelly bean transistor that could be reused, but we don't know if it's any good. And not only it tells us that yes, it's a working transistor, it also tells us the pinout white LED. 2.75 volt forward voltage. It can measure a frequency. I've got the UT33D that has got a square wave output, 50 hertz. It can generate some square wave on, you know, some useful frequencies from, let's see, what's the lowest? Okay, 1000 millihertz. So from 1 hertz up to 200 kilohertz. Okay, here it is. So this is the 1 hertz. And we can go up to 10 hertz. And 50 hertz. That's a 1 kilohertz. Still square 500 kilohertz 5 kilohertz sorry uh, 10 25 50 but as you can see it's still usable it starts to get funny in towards the top end i mean that's a half a megahertz and that's one megahertz it's got something on the output but this is better than not having anything 10 bit pwm oh okay 7.8 kilohertz PWM signal as you can see and that works just as intended show data that's an interesting option so that just shows you the stored data so that's the calibration and other bits and then it goes through all the graphics that it's got in the memory and that tells us what sort of devices it can measure so we've got BJT's FETs IGBT's more IGBT's MOSFETs more MOSFETs Triax, thyristors, coils, capacitors, different diode setups, resistors, inductors and diodes and, and so on. So yeah, and we've got the font. And that's it. So that's what it was able to measure. That will be useful to have around in the lab. And it was great fun to build it. For this video, that's it. Take care.